everyone, Dr. Denise Dart here. Today we're going to be talking about how to get to that place where you absolutely positively know enough is enough and that you are ready to do what's necessary to break free from this relationship that's been hurting you for so long and to move forward with your life. I can't tell you how many people reach out to me and say, you know, I know this is hurting me. I'm a shadow of my former self. My self-esteem is hurting. My life is in shambles. My finances are a mess. And yet I can't get myself to take that step to leave. Other times I hear from people who have left and like so many who have broken free from a toxic relationship, find themselves going back. Sometimes not once or twice, but many times going back again and again, doing your research, if you will, as to will it get better? Can it get better? Is there any hope in this relationship? And so really what it comes down to is pleasure versus pain and finding that space where you know it will be more painful for you to stay in this relationship than it will be for you to face the fear and the uncertainty of leaving the relationship, moving on with your life. The best way to get to that place is to notice that more times than not, your thoughts are taking you to a future place. You can't deal with fear. You can't deal with decisions, with pain, with pleasure way out there. The only place that we can connect is in the present moment rather than thinking maybe tomorrow it's going to get better. Maybe if I get him to read this book, maybe if I get her to go to therapy with me, whatever it is, it's out there. And so, so often with the idea that pleasure is around the corner, it's, it allows you to avoid the pain in the moment. So in order to cope with a toxic, abusive relationship long term, people tend to numb out in the moment to justify what's happening, to, um, to give the person a break. After all, you know, it's been a stressful day or, you know, whatever it is that is being used to give this person a break, bring yourself back to the present. Feel what you're trying so desperately hard not to feel. Pay attention to the pattern of the relationship. Write down in your heart, on, in your phone, on paper, wherever you can have this and know that it will be safe and secure, write down a journal keeping track of what's happening. You'll be able to see the cycle over time, but in the moment, pay attention to what's happening. Pay attention to what you're feeling inside. Listen to that voice within you that is wise, that's been trying to get your attention for so long. Stop in the moment, pay attention and listen. When we lean forward into the future, we lose our power. We don't know what's coming. We have no idea. So how can we see ourselves in that how can we create a story in that when you've lost your self-esteem, your finances are not secure, you don't know where you'll go, all of your friends and family seem to believe your abusive partner more than they believe you. Whatever the situation is, it feels like you are out there alone. And if you have children even more, how am I going to provide for my kids? So each time you feel yourself leaning forward and making up stories that keep you stuck in this very painful, very abusive relationship, I want you to bring yourself back to the center. Pay attention. Notice what you do in the face of all of the things that this narcissistic, emotionally abusive person has used to control you. The projection, the deflection, the stonewalling, the ignoring you, the withholding physical and emotional affection with maybe even the glamour gaslighter type of person who showers you with gifts and acts as if the horrible things that happened last night didn't happen. 
Okay, all of these things in the moment, if you step back, you, you can't change this other person, but what you can change is you. You can stop responding. You can stop getting pulled into that cycle that twists and turns you and the lies and the accusations. And before you know it, what was a, what you thought would be a reasonable conversation has been flipped on its head and suddenly you have been painted into this corner in a way that you feel you can't escape. So the first thing I want you to do is begin to practice being in the moment. Don't worry about your spouse or your partner and what he or she is going to do, but bring yourself to the moment. A good idea is to have a mindfulness practice that you engage in every single day. It might be 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. It can be once a day, twice a day at bedtime. Maybe you put on headphones and fall asleep to it. If you are with your abuser, I can almost guarantee you that this person will taunt you, ask you what you're listening to, make fun of it, put it down. So do it in a way that you can keep it private. Begin to pay attention to yourself, to empower yourself, to notice with acceptance what's there for you in the moment. We don't have to worry about tomorrow or the next day or a week from now. I simply want you to begin by writing yourself so that your head and your heart aren't out there making up stories of, oh my gosh, what will I do? Is it true that no one will love me? All of these things that you're being told for so long, let all that go. It's a story, it's garbage, and nine times out of 10, it's been planted in your head. So let it go and bring yourself back to the present moment. It might be hard. What you're being told may be horrible. It's been horrible. And the point is now, in order to get to that place where enough is enough, and you garner the strength that you know that no matter what is ahead, staying here will continue to tear you down. It will continue to be a bad example for your children. It will continue to be painful. So let's start with now. And I want you to commit to at least three days a, a week to a mindfulness practice. There's so many good resources on the internet. T check out Dr. John Cabot Zinn and look at some of the shorter videos, the sitting meditation, the walking meditation. There's some that are between 10 and 15 minutes long, or if you feel really stressed and anxious and can't sleep, you might wanna try the 60 minute body scan. Whatever you choose to do, I want you to commit to yourself. And this small promise to yourself is the beginning of helping yourself to see that you can count on you. No matter how chaotic the situation, no matter how, how much fear is there, no matter what's going on, you are going to begin to act in a way that you know, no matter who else shows up or not, that you are gonna show up for you. It's been a while since I've done a video, but I'm back. And on the next video, I'm going to be talking about what's next. So please don't think for a moment that you need to do something rash, that anybody else can tell you what to do, when to do it. My goal here is to help you to connect with you, to find that voice inside, to be able to find your wisdom once again, and along with that, to empower yourself and find your strength. You're still in there. You may have been covered up with all this chaos and junk, but I promise you, you're still there. And if you hang with me and you do these steps, commit to a practice, you will find that beautiful person once again.